Hi views, and this is my devlog for dev, devlog two, I believe this is, because devlog one was going over what I'm actually making. So I'm making the arcade cabinet ice cold beer, and I'm making a physical version and a digital version. So I'm using my games programming programming knowledge to actually create the digital version. So this is how far I've got. So before I had this lovely rough little program but usable program to actually normalize the values of the actual whole layout so I've taken this gone as I said before going through the actual uh, the previous video I went through this image and scanned from left to right finding the holes and working out the XY position position of them using basic image pixel um, interrogation to actually find where those where those holes are. A uh, full explanation is in the previous video. I won't go into that in too much detail now, if at all. And what we end up doing is get a normalization, uh, normalization of the actual XY coordinates from the actual image. And I use those to actually build up a map of where the holes are. Um, again, I won't go too much, too much into normalization, but I have got a video explaining what it what it is. Cause very useful, very useful thing. I use it a lot in um, in my line of industry, uh, in the image image in the manipulation industry as a software engineer there. But it can be useful for software engineering, engineering, design, anything. So I've got a video about that as well. So go and check that one out. Well worth a watch if I do say so myself. Anyway, so we've got this uh, data here, and if I jump back to the game, uh, all data .js, here's the data here in my prototype for I've called it lukewarm lager because I'd be changing some of the graphics. Probably may not. Depends if the. Uh, the arcade company wants to come up after me for some money. I don't know. Might do, might not. Anyway, I'm waffling. So we've got the hole data. And we've got the winning holes data. So this is the holes that you actually um, will run from first element right, right to the last. So 70 is the first hole that we want to target in the game following by 6859 and they run backwards because if you look at the board um, I move from left to right top to bottom and obviously this hole here is going to be zero and this one this hole is going to be the very last hole for something like 84 or something so obviously if we're playing the game from top to bottom Sorry, bottom from bottom from bottom to top. Then we're going to be descending through the uh, the actual array itself. Sorry, uh, descending through the holes, the whole numbers itself, because I've actually read from top to bottom. If that that explanation actually makes any clearness, clearness. If that explanation makes it clear at all. So anyway, load these in in my game so remember this is just a prototype and I'm loading them in here so holes.js whole data.js and the winning holes are loaded and the games.js is my main game um, JS file all done in JavaScript so I have a look at this HTML file now just go for it. So the scoreboard sits as a div, and the reason why I've put that in there because I've built this game in something called Matter.js. First time I've used Matter.js on its own as a prototype system, and uh, I tried to do the scoreboard in there. I got a bit confused because trying to get a piece of text on there was wasn't the the easiest of. Uh, of tasks and when I had a look at the support for it and it looks like you have to actually create a custom object to actually create text on the screen so I thought blow it 
I'll uh, just create a div, flowing div at the top that sits above um, the game board and I just update that div with the actual uh, the score itself so going to matter.js, yeah, so that's the library I use for this um, what I'm looking to do is looking at going through for the main project itself using phaser.js and from there I may even work backwards and then slowly pull that game backwards through time um, to something like uh, C and then to the NES and then to the Spectrum if I've got time but may do it, may not see how I go with this maybe a nice future project I can do anyway so I've pulled these in from a CDN called Cloudflare cloudflare.com and made that map.js JS is in there and also pulled in what some people reckon that day is nasty is the jQuery uh, library as well I think I use that in a couple of places I don't think I really need to but it makes things a little bit easier sometimes sometimes it makes things a hell of a lot harder but in this case my not even use it at all I can't remember Anyway, I'm retrospecting this because I've already done. You can see here I've already started on the prototype with ES6 for phaser with ES6 um, style formatting, which is probably ES10 now. And also there's a, the pre ES6 one there as well. So this is all retrospective. So actually, into the game itself, let me show you the game and very basic graphics <coughs> it's face to start your arm can pivot and the ball moves with the pivot up down etc i haven't got um buttons controlling the left and right side pivoting the arm by the left and right pivot because the uh, pivot is always stuck into the center with matter.js and i asked one of the forums is there any way to actually get a pivot on the uh, the right and left side and someone come back and said well, why would you want to pivot on the right and left side because if you think of a wheel then the axis goes through the middle mm, yeah I'm not thinking of a wheel though I want to pivot the actual uh, the actual uh, arm itself by the, the, the right or the left side so um, yeah I'm not sure if they understood what I was trying to do but I've got over this in phaser uh, with a bit of trigonometry, which I'll go through once we get to that actual log itself. So yeah, so I can uh, move up and down, roll the ball left and right, and uh, woo, that was close, and get it into the wrong hole, and you'll see the actual balls um, count will go down, and actually get it into the right hole. The score will go, the score itself will go up, but I was in, I was into minus scores there, so. I didn't get anything for that, so let's get into that one. See the actual armor stopped and the bonus is counting down, the same as uh, same as in the original game. So the bonus counts down and gets added to the score on the left hand side there. And we get a new ball. So yeah, this is fully basically fully fully working. Uh, very basic. And I'll just get this to game over. See the balls are going down, and the next designated hole is got lit by a little red dot at the top. So we can get it into that one, and now the bonus is counted down, the scores counting up, and after that the actual arm gets reset. There's no sound on here at all, so basic prototype, thrown together, thrown together with love, and yeah, all working. Game over. So there we go. So that's the game all working at its prototype stage and onto some code so I've showed you the index page that's quite simple and onto the game.js itself yeah so this config runs um, parts of the game such as the score delay <coughs> that's when you saw the actual uh, score being updated there's a bit of a delay on that and also I've got a lost ball delay there 
a whole diameter or a set and from that whole diameter I have a, a ball size of the percentage of that hole so I'm saying it's 90% of that whole diameter and I'll work that out down here so the ball diameter I take a work out the actual how big it should be compared to these two parameters here um, and also we've got another delay here for the age bonus so that's when you see the bonus actually counting down it counts down every three seconds um, don't have to worry about that like I said before I'm using matter.js and I said world bounds x and y here and you see the y is 1500 that allows it to scroll up and down and I use a camera fixed position and I fix it to well, to look at my arm and that allows us to scroll up and down but it doesn't allow us to scroll along the x um, if this was larger than the actual width of the actual uh, game canvas itself which is up here game width and game height then it will automatically scroll so if, so master.js um, deals with all that for you so grateful quick prototyping in there um, I've got board to start and position here x and y and yeah we went to pull diameter um, I've got my boolean values for my keys here ready to go um, scoring object and let's get into the nitty gritty so bit of jQuery here so that she don't even know why I bother with that actually document dot ready on that that would be okay right so that's where I'll pull in all the actual um, HTML objects assign them up for the scoreboard and this one here is actually where I pull in the actual uh, normalized data from the actual file that I showed before the actual uh, where is it? holestate.js there we go, that holestate.js so pull those all in there so that loads that so we go through through the actual it's loaded into data.data there, so there should be jump into here, this should be assigned there, const data so that's why I'll load it in there uh, take the length of that and literally go through all the actual uh, holes um, we look for the array that I've got set up for the actual winning holes which is that one, winning holes, so it's an array and we find out if the index that we're looking at i actually sits in that winning hole so in that array if it does set a boolean value which is used here and I actually use get the midpoint in normalization data so data i dot mid so we have a look at that that's the wrong one. Hold mm -hmm. data, there we go. So we should have a midpoint in here somewhere. There we go. So we've got a midpoint that's a object of x and y normalized value. That's, so that's the center of the hole. And that creates grab that and we create a unnormalized value by times it by the well bounds x. So normalized values dot x times it by the well bound, bound x that gives us a normalized uh, unnormalized value for that so we can actually plot it into our 2d space and do that same for the y on the well bounds y and using the whole diameter and if it's a win hole or not I'll pass that through to this great hole function excuse me boring myself here Hmm. create whole function actually creates a well actually creates the hole itself so I'll give it a style with its yellow yellow black uh, stroke style of white so this is matter.js coming in here and I push the actual 
um, definition of the whole, which is a bodies.circle. So this is a matter object. So matter object as a, a, a x y position with a diameter if it's a circle. And I say that it's going to be a static and it's going to be a sensor to allow me to sense collision detection. Static means that it won't, if I, if I don't, didn't set that and I plot all the holes, what will happen? I'm going to enable gravity, that'll just fall off the actual <laughs> the actual ball itself all down to the bottom of the screen because matter.js is a gravity, uh, gravity engine, sorry, physics engine, gravity engine that um, will control. All the bodies on the screen, whether they're static or uh, or dynamic, static dynamic, yeah, dynamic, and uh, yeah, as all as all the actual gravitational functions and geometry functions to those forces, tractions, joins, chains, etc. Um, yeah, and. Yeah, if I didn't say that's a static, I would just I did that before and I wonder what the hell's going on. And uh, they just fell off the page and went all down to the bottom. Uh, a nice little Kaplunk uh, marble game, basically, when I first started. So, yeah, so uh, it's static. So that's true. And that sets all the holes up on screen. So, after we set all the holes up on screen, hey, yeah. Um, Actually, I should be going through the main part, which is down here somewhere. Where is it? Great hole, great hole. There it is. So this is where I actually, if I start from here, it'd be a lot easier. So this is where I actually start up the uh, canvas itself. Um, Set up the matter object, set the world bounds, and the create hole array. So these are all different functions that I've got in here that I've just divided up. So this actually sets up matter itself. So world, body, bodies, engine. So all these have got to be pulled in. Some of these I may not need. Uh, I haven't refactored this and got rid of them because I've moved on from now, from this point. So set the engine up, set the world up, set up the render, and I'm in here, I'm, you'll see little dots on the ball, and that's a debug, so I'm showing the velocity and showing the collisions as well, so you, when you saw the ball moving, just run this again, you'll see this little dot here, that's a collision dot, and if I start moving, you'll see those dots moving about, so we've got the old, the old collisions, um, debug and velocity debug, debug on there. Jump back. So I've set those. Um, that's uh, showing it as solid. So this is all in debug mode. Kind of, it's it's, it's using the, the matter render engine at the moment. You can override this, but. You have to do all the scrolling yourself and everything like that. So, so for, for prototyping, it's you know the quicker the better. So I've gone through this, this uh, route itself. So that's all cool. So that's the just the setup of the matter, matter objects. Uh, set the world bounds is so this is to do with the actual world itself. So I've made the world a little bit bigger than the render bound itself, so we get actually a bit of a pattern on the left and right hand side. Um, so yeah, this just hits the min minimum max for the world, so we don't actually scroll out. And there's a bit of scaling in here. Um, not quite sure, 100% sure why this is needed. I took it out and uh, it seemed to work fine without it. I've left it in there for the time being. Um, I've got to look a bit deeper into what that is actually for. Uh, create whole row just been over, and then add the game finish to the game. Let's just add the ground as bodies dot rectangles. Makes them static, so matter 
deals with all the collisions and the fidgets themselves. And I've got left and right wall in here that literally contains the ball within that square space. So that is these left and wall, right wall, and there's the bottom. So the ball's all contained. So if I drop this ball down, which I can do, you can see the actual ball is just flowing through the bottom of the actual, has it? Yeah, flowing through the bottom. Okay. So maybe I didn't sort that bit out. No, I didn't. <laughs> I wonder what that is. Left ground. Because it's miles away. The ground is miles away, is it? Ground's probably x400. Half. What about x times 2? X. Well, that should be Y. What's that? X. There's a little debug uh, bug in there. Look at that. It says X, X. This should be Y. <sighs> anyway. I'm surprised that didn't trip me up earlier. Anyway, let's go to carry on. Add the arm. Let's add in the arm to the game. Arm position, X, arm reset position, which is long the Y, so I've got that one right, finally. That's good. So this adds the arm to the game. It just places the arm in the uh, correct position on the screen. Um, and adds it to the world. So we've got this uh, this dot world I add, this dot engine dot world, this dot arm. So this just adds it, adds it to the matter engine itself. Update hood or should be update um, scoreboard. So this just updates the um, scoreboard itself, and it's using we use a state engine here to say if on the state of completed game over or waiting user, then I'll update the actual um, as a div in there game over div. That should be just message div really. So I set to visible, you win, game over, or hit space to start, depending on which which state I'm in. Default state is, state is hidden because I'll be playing the game then. So if I complete the game, game over, I'm waiting at user input. So when it comes up, uh, it's please hit space to start, as you can see there. Then this is run, so that's an update. HUD or hood. Um, and then I tell the engine to run. That's the matter engine itself. Turn the matter to run, and then I got a little. We don't have to worry about this bit here, but this one is important. This render dot run. This dot render. So that runs the debug render, and then I've got an, an event here that allows all allows all the update methods in here. For the, for the actual game itself, so on the before tick event of the engine, so each engine before the engine ticks um, and updates the screens, we rerun all of this um, game loop. So, first thing we're going there is a bit of uh, ball collision. So I'm saying, does the ball actually? Overlaps any of the um, bounds of the holes on screen. If it does, then we know a collision has is being detected. Then I just say if the if the actual bounds contains the position of the actual ball itself, the x y position. So that's one vector in space. So the middle of the ball. Then we know that ball has to be swallowed by the hole. So I say remove ball and then change the score depending on which ball has it has actually fallen in for uh, fallen in so turn to remove ball or do or do is not the ball and remove it from the world I'm ready and that means that the ball will be get added later when the actual arm gets reset um, and I say change score 
So we're saying here that this is where we do our scoring. So has the ball fallen into one of the winning hole data? Uh, yeah, one of the winning holes from the actual data, and making sure that the our scoring index is set to. A minute, that scoring index equals. So I find out which winning hole it's been dropped into. Then I make sure the scoring index that it's dropped into equals the actual target scoring index that we're looking for. So if I've gone already scored in uh, our designated hole of three, then it will change to four, and my target scoring index will up, will be updated. And if it has fallen into one of those actual uh, target, or the actual target hole for that that round, then I set the, our state engine to add score. If not, we go to lost ball. So we jump into our state engine now because that's where we got to. So if it's lost, so so if we yeah, let's go for lost ball. I change the state to busy. So that means in the next tick around, we'll be hitting this switch state here, busy, which means that it will just do, basically do do nothing. It just update, keep the screen update going and do the logic, all the logic behind that. So the lost ball will set a timeout to reduce the balls uh, left. Um, and using lost ball delay here, so I'm running this function after this delay. So reduce balls, uh, reduce balls left, so I run this once so we get this animation of the balls coming down, uh, being reduced. Um, so balls left greater than zero, scoring balls to left minus, remove, remove the amount from the ball and then arm reset. So arm reset. You can see here that it's actually set here as arm reset, so this allows the actual uh, arm to be reset. Obviously, there we go. Case arm reset, arm reset game over. Then we we'll reset the arm. So it's all to do all to do with this state engine that we're uh, actually updating the screen by. So that's a lost ball. Uh, add score, this is where the timer, I didn't really need the timeout here, but it gives a bit of a delay for it to actually, rather than the ball just dumping into the hole and then the score being updated, like the fractions of a millisecond after, it gives a bit of a delay so you can actually see that on screen and gives me a chance to add some animation in there as well. Add score is more uh, prevalent through that because it sets, because we um, add the bonus to the score. So. If we look at that again busy so the next time we go around our state is updated we we'll set time out from the ads, add score and here saying if the bonus is available because I'll count down in tens uh, if score and bonus available greater than ten uh, score minus bonus available then we minus minus ten off the bonus and add ten to the score and then we add another set timeout to run this again. This means when we return, when this actual loop returns, falls out at the bottom, we've got some asynchronous events happening in the background. Um, time is set, so it will be running in the background, and then run this again. So you will see that actual score value slowly move down in tens. Uh, vi visible on screen and then the arm will get reset and once we've actually got our bonus all the way down to, uh, to zero we actually set our next target hole which is here so basically it's incrementing the actual target hole if we pass the, if we pass the increment of the actual uh, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, it's starting with 9 if we pass 10, which is, we've only got 10 scoring holes, then we know we've completed the game. We need to update the HUD with complete status of 
game over or game completed or you win or whatever it is. If not, then we have to reset the arm. Um, so, let's get rid of that. Yeah, so that's all good. So, yeah, it's all run by the state engine. So that's all good. I won't waffle on too much about that. Um, if my state engine is start, set to start, which is set when I believe, yeah, when we've got arm reset and game over, which should be the initial, is that the initial state? Oh uh, yeah, arm reset and game over. No, sorry, it's not. Of course, it's not the original, the original state because that's what one of the original balls. Because if that was the original state, then we won't be able to play the game. So the original state, I believe, is is a weight. It's a weight user. Yeah, a weight user. So original state is a weight user. So we wait for the space bar to be pressed, and then we set the state to arm arm reset, and the space bar is. All done on the key down. So spacebar key down hit is true. Uh, so yeah. Space. Oh, that's any key. So if any key is being pressed, the spacebar key is set to true. I did change that later. I remember now. So that's good. So if that's the case, then our arm is set to arm reset. So arm reset actually adds the arm to the game or and moves it down to the bottom I'll stop cycling through the code in a minute, bear with me now reset arm so there we go, so our arm will be slowly moved so that's when you saw when the arm was went through a hole and it started moving, it moves down to the bottom. The angle gets reset, it moves down, and new balls get added, gets added. Because when we start the game, our arm is down here anyway. When we go hit reset arm, the ball gets added straight away because our arm is, has, a, has approached its final destination. So that's all good. So I won't waffle on too much about that. I've got basic R on the movement so yeah the movement player control got the age bonus there that slowly degrades the actual bonus so that's done on all on the lapse time so calculating the lapse time and if we've gone over the age bonus after so many million seconds I've configured then I reduce the bonus by 10 as per the arcade game so yeah, so oh yeah, I was doing movement as well as I move. I'll be key down actually. Down left, left key, down right, down left, left key, right key, space, left key. So movement. There we go, so uh, math allows you just to rotate um, the actual body itself by this body.rotate and you give what body you want to rotate and how much you want to rotate it by. And so that's a plus, uh, obviously a positive number. And I've got the right key here, which rotates in a negative direction, so that allows you to move the arm, um, or pivot the arm around that center point. And then I've got to translate up and translate down. Um, I've tried two different methods here to see how they perform. They all seem to perform the same way, so this is just moving the arm up and down. Um, got a bit of zoom in here, here now. Where's this camera? There's the camera. Show you last thing I want to show you, show you how to how I actually the uh, camera. Follow the actual ball itself. 
Ah, full of the arm. This on the position. Translate scale. Translate. So let's apply the zoom. Send a few on player. There it is. Already there. So this allows the actual uh, bounds to be shifted. So the bounds this is set around the actual player. This, the player itself in this in this case it's the arm. So what I'm actually doing is locking the bounds viewpoint to the player by using bounds x position and then minus in the, the inner width of the window divided by 2 and the y position and doing the same so that actually centers it on the screen itself and that means that the bounds will shift in relation to the actual uh, arm itself so we can actually move around our our uh, well bounds um, and allows you to scroll so that's what that part does so that's how we actually uh, position ourselves in 3D space and allow us to, not 3D space, 2D space and allow us to actually um, scroll for our world. It's a lot more clear in phase out actually how that works because I think it's a more, literally a one, one uh, line command that allows you to do that. So that's the update of Ice Cold Beer prototype in Matter.js. After this I made a prototype in phaser to actually get how I used to how that was working in there and in the next video I'll take you through that.